Greetings football managers and fans and today we will be doing our first experiment in which I have decided to give the absolute worst team in the Vanarama National League North a major boost and that will be Banbury United gotta say I absolutely love that logo it's got the shades of the Monopoly man has to be said but the first thing we did if we take a look at the editor we boosted their reputation all the way up I have to boost their morale as well we gave them 150,000 all-seater stadium maxed out their finances maxed out their income and I've also given them the best possible manager so I boost their current manager Mark Jones to be an absolute monster assistant is no different and we also transferred Phil Cannon over to them as a head of youth development and boosted his judging player ability and working with youngsters and we also modified his personality so he's a perfectionist boosted all the other staff members basically so they've got a good backroom staff going for themselves and it should be an interesting simulation to see how they get on with maxed out finances maxed out youth and training facilities as well maxed out recruitment and with one absolute star of a player whom we just modified so I took their youngest striker Matty Lusaqueno and I boosted the heck out of him so I gave him really good physicals max work rate and determination good finishing passing positioning off the ball flair and composure and I slightly boosted his technique to 12 which when we take a look at the editor again it gives him a current ability of 106 and I boosted his potential ability to 160 and also changed his ambition loyalty pressure professionalism and sportsmanship stats as well as consistency because that is very important and I gave him maximum versatility and maximum rating on important matches so now we will go ahead and simulate one season and see how they get on and here we are at the end of season one and as we see banbury united have been promoted as champions from the national league north with 96 points having only lost eight matches and drew nine so 29 9 and 8 is their final record with the goal difference of 36 best in the league and the only matches they've lost were away to Scunthorpe at home to South Shields away at Alfreton Town at home versus Bishops Stortford and away matches against South Forth South Shields Gloucester City and Scarborough Athletic. In terms of end of season stats, none of the Banbury players led the league. However, the young superstar whom we boosted, Luis Aquino, scored 26 goals and provided three assists for a final average match rating of 7.01 and if we have a quick look into the editor again his current ability has grown 14 points from 106 to 120 and his value has risen as a result as well so he's worth upwards of 12 million now if that is to be trusted in game when we have another look at the league so they haven't Banbury haven't really led in any specific category except for points per game and goals tied well 
No, not tied. Actually, yeah, they are tied with Boston United. Um, goals per game. Expected goals for. Non-penalty expected goals. Non-penalty expected goals per 90. 100 chances created. 645 shots for. Shots on target of 292. Shots on target ratio of 45%. Uh, what else do we have here? Final third passes for 4,555. Way ahead of everybody else. Defending, they've conceded 39 goals. And with their manager having 20 and buying players, he should be able to bring in some defenders to help them out. Especially with the sponsorship, sponsorship income and other money coming into the club for the next season they should be considerably stronger especially now that they're going up league uh, in terms of average attendance they didn't sell out the stadium but they were just about some 7200 seats off of selling it out which is good so 95% of stadium capacity was filled They've had two stadium sellouts, though. Or oh, wait, never mind. They did not. Obviously, they're going to have the highest attendance because they have a 150,000 all-seater stadium. That is it for the end of Season 1. I will go ahead and see how they do in the following season. And we'll touch upon it in a moment. Alright, here we are at the end of Season 2, and Banbury United did not win promotion from the National League, ending in second place, and let's see just about where they lost. They lost in the final to Dagen Red, so a new rivalry is born once both teams are back in the same, same league and playing regularly against each other. Now... In terms of how the players did, well, first, let's take a look at the transfers, which is something I didn't do in the previous season recap. So they brought in a bunch of players on a free, which they could have been buying players left and right. They have the funds for it, but they're doing the sensible thing and bringing in players on a free transfer. And a few players went out on loan. Now when we take a look at their tactics, you'll notice that Mari Lusaqueno is not in the starting lineup. However, he does start 42 matches and scored 33 goals. So that looks decent. Now, in terms of the stats again, let's have a look at the detailed overview. Best in home form, 34 games um, in a row with the goal. Their defense is still lacking because apparently they're still conceding a lot of goals. Goals per game and goals total, 77 and 1.60 goals per game. A little bit on the lower side, but... That's okay, expected goals for 85.63, non-penalty 84.82, non-penalty expected goals per 91.77, chances created, shots for and shots on target, once again league leaders, final third passes 5,298, oh, almost a thousand above crew Alexandra who are in second place in that category. 19 clean sheets. In possession won 5,595 5, times. Tackle rate at 79%. Uh, shots against, unfortunately, were they were the leaders in that category too. Final third passes against as well. And of course, once again, average attendance. This time dropping from 97% to 95%. So 
So, or was it 95 last season too? I think it was actually. Yeah, it was 95%. So yeah, that is it for the end of season recap. It looks like they will be in Vanarama National League for a second consecutive season. And we will see you back at the end of season three. All right, so at the end of season three, Banbury United have been promoted as champions. So they will be moving into Football League Two for the following season. Now, in terms of stats, let's have a look here. So overall competition goals leader again, Matt Matty Lusaquino. One thing I did not mention at the end of season two recap was his potential improvement. Pardon me, which he jumped to 136 at the end of last season, current ability, and he's nearly at his full potential at 152. Now he is almost fully developed, and he's got well. He had crazy physical attributes to start start with because I did modify him as I mentioned earlier on. And he's only improved from there, which was to be expected. So at 156 current ability, 160 potential. He's almost right there and he's worth up to 44 million. So the question is, will Banbury United be selling him? for the following season well we'll find out and mark jones is still there as the manager Let's see his contract i think runs out in 2028 yep so that should be good um their transfers they bought a guy for 10 million efron mason clark a left winger primarily he can play on the right or up front as a striker or as a winger deeper down and they got him from Peterborough United wow 11.25 million I think they overpaid there now looking at league stats so again best home form best average possession so that's going better than it used to points per game 2.57 expected goals for 89.06 which is up by about two from last season non-penalty expected goals up about uh, one point one goal or so from last season non-penalty expected up by about 0 0.1 again all of this is com comparison to the last season passes completed wow 21,498 again third season running and they topped the charts and goals conceded so the manager is definitely not doing his job at bringing in adequate defenders to help the team out they're sticking at about 95 percent attendance by capacity for the third season in a row and yeah it's looking like they could be doing better now their reputation has dropped off from when i modified them last season their training facilities and youth facilities dropped by half a star but they've been upgraded again and there was one ch change that they made on the coaching staff and that was bringing in two heads of youth development Ed Vahid, who actually looks pretty decent, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, how he became a head of youth development beats me, but Ronaldo is the head of youth development at Banbury United, which sounds hilarious to me. But it is what it is. The rest of their staff are all filled out and looking the same as they did last season. There definitely could be some potential upgrades there, but Mark Jones is the one who should be deciding on that, unless he leaves that up to a technical director like I usually do. 
which uh, they don't actually have one of those. So, again, at the end of the season, Banbury United are finally promoted from the Vanarama National League as champions. 118 points with only two losses, losing 2-0 away at Hartlepool and 1-0 away at Sutton United. Seven draws and 37 wins. All right, so the end of season four sees Benbury United promoted as champions from Skybet League 2 with 125 points and only one loss to their name. 40 wins, five draws, one loss and 46 matches. Once again, none of the Banbury players featured in the player stats columns. However, Ronaldo has managed to find a gem. And that's Reese Harry's here, or Rice Harry's, pardon me. What a player he is, and he's only 17. Already looking like a beastly player. And if we take a look at his potential ability, it's 175 in the editor. And current ability of 129 for a 17 year old. It's been a long time since I've seen something like this. But needless to say, he's managed to find a really good prospect. Now, in terms of the attendances for the league, if we take a look at that here, again, we're topping out at 95%, or they are, I'm not managing the club. So it hasn't changed. So 150,000 all-seater capacity stadium, sees a, on average about 142 to 143,000 attending the games and I mean considering the boost we've given this club they've got to be rich by now so Mari Lusaqueno was actually sold to Brentford for 24 and a half million and if we have a look at his entire career for, while playing for Banbury United over four seasons he started 171 matches scoring 108 goals provided 11 assists and collected 15 player of the match uh, awards for a total average rating of 7.17 so considering that they do have another rising star on the team it makes sense that he was moved on and especially since he was pretty much at his full potential. Actually, let's have a quick look at that. Yeah, he's at his full potential. So he's out. They could have gotten more money for him probably, but 24 and a half is pretty reasonable. And with that, we'll move on to season five. And here we are at the end of season five, having a quick look at the latest youth intake. And looks like Ronaldo's done it again. He's found another very good prospect there in Loveland. At 17 years of age, he's already looking like a decent prospect. He's lacking a little bit on, on the work rate, unlike the um, prospect he found in the last youth intake. But next up, we have John Phillips. As you can see, the current ability and potential ability are all built in here. So he's got 73 current ability, 148 potential, and 90 current and 151 potential for Loveland. And the next one that came in through this particular youth in intake was Abdullah Leclerc. He's a uh, right back, and he's looking really good as well. So hopefully these kids can develop and a couple of years down the line when Banbury are hopefully in the Premier League, they'll be able to help them out. Now, looking at the season results, Banbury got promoted as champions again. 
115 points with only three losses. And they've only lost to Bristol Rovers, Fleetwood, and Sheffield Wednesday. So 36 wins, 7 draws, and 3 losses for 115 points. Very much clear at the top of the table. For the um, stats, as I usually take a look at, best in average possession, best in points per, per game, once again best home form, but it kind of helps when they have 140 plus thousand people watching them game in and game out. Cross completion, 17%, best in the league best pass completion in the league so they've been doing well and average attendance has gone up by one percent since they moved up to football league one and they'll be in the championship next season before we conclude the initial five season sim and move on to the next five years as a bulk let's have a look and see how the players performed so first off their tactics since they haven't changed the manager he prefers using a 4-2-4 and he's been using that throughout their entire journey here although it does look like they might have sold the kid that was found by Ronaldo I keep forgetting his name yes they did 39 million 60 million potential potential value over to Tottenham. Oh wow. Oh, it's not a surprise. The kid's a beast. Three seasons in Banbury. He played two seasons for them. And scored 33 goals and 63 appearances with a 7.22 average match rating. But to get 39 plus million for him, that's that's a good deal for them. Overall, pretty smart transfers. We see they brought in Jeremy Doku from Man City, uh, Brindelli from Luton Town, and Fabio Silva from Wolves. So that's looking all right for them. I'm curious to see how they'll do in the championship and beyond. But for the season stats, as I mentioned earlier, uh, let's see. Top goal scorer, Jeremy Sarmiento with 21. He's looking like a decent player. Jeremy Doku had 19, and Miles Flanagan had 16, a youth prospect. So, yeah, they're doing a good job at developing the youngsters throughout the last few years, and um, that'll be it for the five season sim and we'll move on to the next five years overall and here we are again and Benbury have been promoted from Skybet Championship to Premier League for 2029-30 season after a stellar year finishing at the top of the table tied on points with Wolves but taking the top spot on the virtue of a better goal difference. The other team going up with Banbury in this case is Leicester City, so they will be making their return to the Premier League. And we'll see just how competitive they can be once they are up there. So at the end of the 2029-30 season, Banbury United have managed to survive in the Premier League by four points. Leeds United, Norwich, and Burley, Burnley are getting relegated. And Arsenal have won the league with Liverpool, uh, Man City, Chelsea, and Man United, and Tottenham following them into Champions League for next season. Brighton will be competing in Europa League along with Newcastle and Everton will be the only English representative for the Europa Conference League. The end of the 2030-31 season sees a much better performance by the Banbury United boys as they finish the season in ninth place in the Premier League. So looking at it just two points out from a Conference League spot. 
which is a very good achievement for them. Chelsea have won the league this time. Arsenal came in second with Liverpool, Tottenham, Man United, Man City. Well, and Man United, pardon me, following them into Champions League. So England have lost the spot in coefficients table by the looks of it. Now Man City and Brighton are going into into Europa League and Newcastle will be in the Conference League. At the end of the 2031-32 season, Benbury have managed to qualify for UEFA Europa Conference League, finishing the season with a total of 61 points in 8th place. Man City have won the league. Arsenal, Newcastle, Man United and Chelsea will follow them to the, to the Champions League. Liverpool will be the sole representative for Europa League with Banbury United the sole English representative for the Conference League. And at the end of the 2032-33 season, Banbury finished in 12th with 47 points. So a drop off from the previous year, but they've managed to win themselves a trophy. I think it was the FA Trophy qualifying them for the or the FA Cup, pardon me, qualifying them for the Europa League alongside Brighton, Everton and Newcastle who will also be com competing in the Europa League. Arsenal have once again won the uh, Premier League title. So alongside them will be Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United and Tottenham in the Champions League. So at the end of it all, and something I didn't mention earlier, is that Banbury have managed to win themselves the Conference League title in the 2033 and 2032-33 season. And as you can see here, it's been straight promotions except for one season in 2024-25 in the Venerama National League where they finished as runners up and lost in the playoff final to Doug and Red, I believe it was. But following that, they've managed to shoot straight up the football pyramid and all the way up to the Premier League. And that will be the end of the video. So thank you all for tuning in. And if you enjoyed the content, please make sure to like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you back for the next one.